Hi, um, I'm Sarah Venn. I'm a circuit judge and I work in Kent, Surrey and Sussex in the county courts. The courts are where people come to when they have an argument and they can't agree what should happen. And basically the judge is the decider and they have to decide who is right and who is wrong and what the law says and how it applies to the disagreement that they've got and then tells them what will happen. But I suppose the difference with having a judge decide is that when we make an order, it can be enforced. So people can be made to do what the judge says should happen. So it's not quite the same as going to your teacher and saying, I've fallen out with so-and-so about this, who's right? There are big consequences when it comes to court and the judge has to decide who's right. Circuit judge is a description of the type of judge that I am. So um, I do work in the county courts and I decide disputes between people about all sorts of things. Generally, they don't involve people who are accused of committing a crime or disputes about families. So when people get divorced or when there are arguments about where a child should live and who they should live with. But I do all sorts of other things. So um, last week I was deciding a dispute between neighbours about whether one had taken some of the other's garden because overnight they had demolished the fence between the gardens and rebuilt a wall and nicked about a metre uh, or so of somebody's garden is what was said. Um, I decide disputes between businesses about whether they're owed money. When people say that they're injured in accidents or that the hospital have made a mistake, I deal with that sort of thing as well. So it's a really interesting job. So the best thing about my job is how interesting it is. I meet different people every day and they come in and they tell me about what's happening in their lives. And I would like to hope that I make a difference to what's happening. We really try to encourage people to settle their disagreements at an early stage before they spend lots of money on lawyers and they really then fall out with each other. And sometimes we, we manage to do that and it's a great feeling to see people be able to put their differences aside and leave. And they, they may not be leaving as the best of friends, but they've put it behind them in their lives. So I, I just hear about everything that's going on locally. I hear about all the different things that people are involved with. And I enjoy hearing and talking to people. So it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Well, before I was a judge, I had to work um, in the law as a barrister, a solicitor, or what's known as a legal executive. Now, barristers are basically the people who do all the arguing in court and you see them stood up and talking in court. Although a lot of solicitors do that very well now too. Um, solicitors are quite often the people who do a lot of the very heavy paperwork. They give advice to the um, person that is employing them and they tell them about the dispute and how things are going to work. And the two sort of do different jobs, but they're both as important. Uh, and a barrister couldn't do their job without the solicitor and vice versa. And then a legal executive is a new way of becoming a lawyer where you can qualify without having to go to university. And given how expensive that is now, it's really worth looking into. Um, I think they're described as legal apprenticeships and you can qualify through and become a solicitor. Uh, and if you want to, you can become a barrister and you can even become a judge. And there are lots of judges who came straight from school into the legal profession without having to go to university. So I was a barrister for, for quite a long time. And then I started doing a, uh, judge work part time and I was a deputy district judge. That was my job title. And it sort of told you the level of work that I did. And deputy told you that I wasn't doing it all the time, that I was doing something else as well. And then in 2018, I became a circuit judge. So I've been doing that for almost five years now. There are loads of jobs available in the courts, so it's not just being a judge or a lawyer. I am supported by so many people who I couldn't do my job without. We have IT specialists, we have clerks who come to court, they make sure that the court runs as it should run. Um, the office is full of staff who type up orders, they tell people when they have to come to court, they manage all the correspondence and we get so much correspondence every day, we would be absolutely lost without them. And when I was a barrister, I worked from a place called Chambers, which is basically a group of barristers all coming together to work in a building. And we employed people who did marketing, uh, IT, people who managed our diaries, people who managed the building. So there are so many jobs in law and they're all really interesting. Well, during COVID, um, being a judge and coming to work was deemed to be one of the um, essential um, jobs. So we carried on working, but one of the biggest things that happened was that we had some software brought in that let us do a lot of our work by video. Now there are some types of case that we have to do with everybody in the building, particularly where there's a chance of somebody going to prison. 
But I kept on working through the pandemic. Um, and the only thing I would say that's changed since the pandemic is that we do a lot more things by video. And that's great because I remember when I was a barrister, I'd be getting up one morning to go to Cornwall. The next day I'd be going to, you know, Lancashire. I'd be traveling all over the country. Um, so the fact that you can now do things by clicking a button on a computer from anywhere um, is really amazing. But that, that's been the sort of the main carryover. I can't think of anything else. Well, I suppose the, the main thing I would say that is more sustainable is that we get a lot of our paperwork electronically now and we don't print it out. And the other week I did a trial and I had, I think, 20 lever art files of printed paper. And this was a trial that went on for quite a long time. So there was loads to read. Um, and I can't imagine how much paper was in there. There's, there's probably about three or 400 pages in every lever art file. But that's now becoming the exception rather than what normally happens. So a lot of my bundles come in electronically and um, we, 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 I, we must be printing so much less. It's, um, it's really positive on that front. And with fewer people having to travel, um, there are a few of us on the roads, fewer barristers having to come to court as well. We have lots of drives within the court where the court staff have uh, initiatives and they try and improve things. And all of our light switches have been switched so that if they don't detect a movement, they turn the lights off so we can't forget to turn them off. So there are things like that that are happening. And everywhere we've got mixed recycling bins and general waste bins. Um, I'm sure there's more we can do, but we're always trying to improve. So we won't train you to be a lawyer in the courts. You have to go to a solicitor's firm or a barrister's chambers to develop as a lawyer. But we have lots of young people who come in when they finish their studies and they normally start by either being IT support because we find they're brilliant at it um, or they start off with clerking the judge in court. So that involves setting the courtroom up, recording the hearing. The judge might need photocopying doing or they, they might need some assistance as a case carries on. They swear the oath with witnesses. So when a witness comes to give evidence, they have to give a promise to the court to tell the truth and they will take the oath from the witness. And they go on from there. So um, we had somebody who started fairly recently and they were amazing at IT. And they've now just gone up and been promoted to regional support IT um, in quite a short space of time. Um, we have court managers, office managers, and then they grow. So the region has a manager, we have cluster managers, and then you can move up within the court service and within the judicial office to more roles. So we had somebody who started when they finished university and they've now just gone to the high court in London to look after a high court judge. So there are lots of opportunities to, 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 to grow your career starting in the courts. I suppose one of the things I would say, and it's not necessarily something I wish I'd known, but it's just be nice to everybody because you never know who you're talking to and who you're going to meet. I remember going camping one weekend with my partner and we were camped next to a school and the school name was emblazoned all over the minibus and the behaviour was just appalling. Um, I don't think I got any sleep. They were doing all sorts of things that they shouldn't do. And I came back to work and I emailed the headmaster and I said, I'm, I'm really sorry to contact you, but your school is going out advertising that this is the name of your school. And I really think that they should think twice because you never know who's there. And you could be sitting next to an employer. And I suppose that carries over. Think about what you do on social media because you cannot undo it. It's always there and people will look. I remember employing barristers when I was a barrister and I would have a little look to see if they put something on social media. Um, but I, I suppose that I, the main thing I wish I'd known is that actually I would love being a judge because I'd never even thought about being a judge. Um, and it was only somebody who's persuaded me to do it they did it and I wish I'd known more about it because I might have tried to do it a bit younger had I known because I love it it's a brilliant job